Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to day two of IWCon 2022. This talk is by Dhyaneshwaran B, who is, uh, who is an AppSec researcher at projectdiscovery.io. And the talk is going to be about hacking the cloud for fun and profit. Uh, we are happy to present this talk to you in association with our sponsors, HackRoo, Zero Point Security, Yes, We Hack, Pat Chen, Subtang Labs, and our amazing community partners. Uh, just a quick reminder before we start the talk, this is a live talk, so feel free to show your comments and your love for the speaker through emojis. And there is going to be a Q&A following this talk, so hang around till the end, then you can ask your questions in the Q&A section of the, in the right side of your screen. Remember, you can take screenshots, tag us on Twitter, tag the speaker, and you're eligible to participate in our giveaways. We have giveaways of a Burp Bounty Pro annual subscriptions and Pentester Lab Pro uh, monthly coupons. We also have some cool IW swag, including t-shirts. So if you would only like to be considered for IW swag, then you can use the hashtag IW swag when you post on Twitter. So yeah, that is all. Uh, and I'm very excited to present our speaker on stage. And over to you, Dhyaneshwaran. Uh, hi, Akansha. Thanks for the nice intro. So let me... Well, there was some glitch. Yeah, and Dhyaneshwaran is back. Uh, hi, Vansha. Yeah, thanks for the nice intro. So let's start, uh, get started with the session. So today's topic is about uh, hacking cloud for fun and profit. So just a little bit uh, intro about me. So I'm Dhyaneshwaran and uh, I work as an application security researcher at uh, Project Discovery. And you can find me at uh, Twitter at DhyanesTK. If I go by the handle DhyanesTK. So today's agenda is about uh, introduction to cloud security and uh, scenario-based attacks on it and uh, a live demo and some of the tools uh, will be showcasing it. So we'll be showcasing in detail about cloudless tool and uh, there are some other scenario-based attacks that I found today and uh, how to automate those and a uh, few more other stuffs. Yep. So first of all, uh, people who are like very new to cloud and uh, why we need to learn cloud security, I will just give a small intro of it. So cloud security is like, a, it's something like a set of policy and strategy uh, because most of the companies runs on cloud. So we have to safeguard them. So we follow a procedure called cloud security and uh, there are like defensive way as well as an offensive way. Uh, if you ask me in offensive way, we do pen testing and a black box approach. If in a defensive way, uh, we try to mm, properly configure the cloud instances or uh, cloud settings to make sure there is uh, no breach of data of customer data or personal data. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So why to learn cloud security? Because uh, uh, there was a recent uh, hike or a hike in like, like more people started to adapt to cloud and uh, the more companies have started to adapt to cloud security. So cloud security becomes like a more important, crucial uh, asset of the company. So let's take an example like uh, Paytm. So they use us uh, AWS. So let's take Microsoft, they use Azure. So every storage and uh, identity information or personal information or data are being handled in cloud. So if you see, according to the Gartner uh, statistics, like there are like, it's going to be reach around 500 billions of uh, cloud users and services in uh, clouds. So this is why like you need to learn about cloud security. So these are some of the top cloud providers so we we already know like there is Azure, uh, AWS, and Google Cloud, and Alibaba Cloud, and IBM Cloud. So most people might have uh, seen AWS and Azure and Google Cloud. So there are like multiple other cloud providers. There are around like 16 cloud providers that I have like tested so far. 
and uh, some of them include uh, dropbox and which are like mentioned not here but if you consider which is most dominating in the industries like aws which is like a 70 or 50 percentage of the market share goes under aws so this is the demo that i was talking about and uh, it includes uh, these six topics and uh, i will try to cover these topics in half an hour if possible or else we'll try to showcase some of the screenshots or a little bit introduction of it so these are not access tokens running cloud list with nuclear ec2 take over via bus configuration was proxy and amazon ec2 ssrf and uh, google blocket policies and some interesting things these are like everything is in black box approach uh, i will store show from the scratch how to start a uh, uh, look for these tokens and secrets so what's common in this uh, cloud providers anyone in the chat can tell or anyone can uh, let me know like if there is any one know like what is common in the cloud providers mostly anyone roles correct so <coughs> roles are there and uh, other uh, iam privileges are there and uh, they commonly have a secret key or an access token and uh, few other things keys access tokens secrets so uh, if you have a amazon aws account you can create a security credential which have an access token and access keys so i used a free subscription like these are expensive i believe but uh, how you can like find vulnerabilities from a black box that's what like we'll cover like how do we get those keys and where to look for so these are not access tokens you were looking for this is like more than access token i would say once you have access to uh, once you find some access key or secret key you will be able to more leverage the internal assert and do an assert mapping uh, do a listing of the instance uh, see what are the domain it runs on what is the ec2 uh, ami policy and other things you can <coughs> if you are going from a pen testing background uh, they basically ask you uh, if you are doing a cloud security pen test if you have done it before so the client usually shares a access key and a secret key of an aws account and then you will try to run tools which are like already present and it will give a generator report but if you are doing a red teaming perspective or a ocent or a threat intelligence you have to find a uh, access token and uh, get some unauthorized access to organization so you will be looking for these keys so then i had a question where to look for so this is the question i had so you can look for these keys in github code search so recently github had made a huge improvement on the code search and it goes by the website cs.github.github.com and other thing is javascript files and comments so uh, if you are using burp sort uh, there is an option called search uh, okay if you go to uh, burp and there is a search option and you can uh, try to use the search option to search for the comments or else if you go to click on the target and right click and use the engagement tool to find scripts so there was an engagement on a pen test uh, i was able to find aws secret keys and access keys into it and i will showcase of your how to use this new github search to find this aws keys so i will we'll just use the same uh, doc which has been used here there are other docs which are there in git leaks and git docker and travel docs so you can try to use those so sometimes uh, the developers try to do a commit of these credential and they delete those commits you can try to uh, go through the deleted commits using uh, some of the pre commit tools so that i will share later in the slides so let's uh, explore the github search which uh, so this is a new github search if you are like not aware uh, so the normal github search looks like you can search for the codes from here and uh, if you go to github.com you can search it from here so this is a new github search which is like a preview 
so we are going to look for aws keys from a black box perspective so we will look for a file env and try to search for this uh, keys in it so it discloses uh, aws keys and aws secrets which are uh, present in github and it uses regex and it checks on the path which uh, ends with dot env so this is how you can look for uh, aws keys and secrets in our uh, github and then you can uh, use verb sort or in, you can use katana as well and then combine it with nuclear to uh, check for sensitive information in the slide uh, in in the javascript files okay so let's go next so once you have the keys uh, you don't know what to do and uh, if you are familiar with AWS CLI, you can configure those keys and check for buckets into it. So uh, cloud list is basically a inventory listing tool of cloud asserts and mapping the IPs of it. So what it does is, uh, <coughs> I'll show you one more. Let's escape this and bring the terminal here. I hope this terminal is visible. Okay. So once you install Cloudlist, uh, you can try to install it by Go. So if once you have installed, you can go to the directory called config and uh, there will be a Cloudlist directory and you can do a hyphen ls hyphen la. So you will, you will see a configuration file here. So the config file shows that uh, what are the settings to be used or what are the cloud providers to be used? So we will see the provider config file. So what I have done is I have set up the vulnerable instance with uh, which contains a vulnerability and I have set up this uh, proud, uh, provider config file which uh, has the provider as AWS and uh, an access key and secret key into it. So how to run this tool? I have configured this in this provider config file and uh, what should I do? This is basically the initially we dis the tool is designed to for blue teaming perspective, cloud list uh, providers and you can provide AWS <coughs> and then hyphen V it will show the verb loss output of it. So it basically used to display both a public IP address and the private IP address of the IP address of the asserts. So basically it will display the VPC subnet as well, the VPC IPs as well. So you can see like uh, the first one, <coughs> first one is a VPC, then the second one is a public IP address. So the, the third one is a internal IP address and the fourth one is a public, public IP address. So what, what I did is uh, there is a command to uh, extract the IP asserts using cloud list and then run a nuclear template into it. So basically uh, you'll be able to, if you implement this into a CICD pipeline, you will be able to find more bugs into it. Like let's take an example. There is a developer spin up a EC2 instance. He has installed the Airflow instance into it, which is like outdated. There is a new series coming and a nuclear template repository has been like updated and uh, you are adding nuclear template into it. And it automatically finds vulnerability if you're trying to run it in a Chrome tab. So you can just put a pipe symbol and hyphen T and templates and uh, silence. Silence is basically, it will not print the nuclear, which is like printed here in like cloud list. So this is how to use uh, cloud list along with nuclear. So if, if you are like unaware, like uh, what is cloud list, you can go to our repository, uh, project discovery, search for cloud list, and uh, you will be able to see this tool. This is one of the most underrated tool I would say for cloud security. And if you combine it with nuclear, it will be become more powerful. And one of the funnest, like one of the, Coolest thing I would say it supports uh, 16 to 10 different cloud providers. And uh, if you have, if you don't know how to configure them, we have provided a provider.md file, which tells how to configure the provider file and uh, what are the things needed. So 
let's take an example you got those keys from uh, github search or commits and uh, you can try to configure this tool and try to list the fine list the asserts and uh, do do search or you can run nuclear or do try to monitor the changes in the assert and try to scan for findings for open ports so these are the things possible using cloud list and uh, nuclear let's move to the next one EC2 take over via misconfigured reverse proxy. So this was a research done by Chris Sulo, one of our teammate, uh, who is the creator of Nikto tool. So it was published last year. So we found this. We were like running it on a larger data set of programs around like one lakh domain or two lakh domain, <coughs> and then we encountered uh, okay, these were like vulnerable. and the target is down and i think uh, it was also put it into out of scope but we had uh, found this on some other companies which were using uh, aws and uh, we were able to get like good bounties with it so let's uh, let me go back to the slide and explain what is mis what is reverse proxy so first getting into reverse proxy we will see what is proxy forward proxy forward proxy is nothing like uh, you have an internal network and the internal network try to reach the proxy and the proxy uh, from the proxy you will be able to reach the internet the reverse proxy is something like uh, the internet user will try to hit the proxy and then try to get the content from the server so what we have done is uh, the the as a user as a internet user i try to hit the proxy the proxy that i'm hitting is with the aws endpoint so there are like multiple uh, metadata endpoints you can name so for e, for aws it's like 169.254.169.254 and uh, for the digital version it's it's different and uh, for google cloud uh, it's different so these are called metadata so once you hit them you will be able to access some of the sensitive information like access key secret keys and other things so if you <coughs> would have noticed it there is a different uh, thing between the reverse proxy ec2 takeover and the uh, ec2 ssrf basically the host name uh, will be given as 169 which is uh, the aws metadata ip and the target name will be be that attack like the target that you are testing or any bug bounty target or it can be any other um, website and it should and it and it should be here 169.254 so once you reach this uh, you will be able to extract the access key id secret key id and uh, you can configure this into a aws cli on or, or you can use cloud list and then try to uh enumerate more or do post exploitation you can take over the instance basically like many companies have paid around like 5k max so far i've got and uh, some of them have paid uh, 2000 dollar just for like uh, not for the lateral movement once i do the lateral movement like i saw there was a transaction happening in like related to payment in ac2 instance so next thing the other best part was uh, while i was preparing for the slide uh, if you noticed here the server here there is an unusual header here ec2 ws okay so what i did what i did was just went to shodan and uh, i searched for this header okay so what i came to know was uh, there were like multiple public instance uh, which was leaking method of of aws so this was pretty cool so then i thought okay uh, it doesn't need a 169 ip the water data ip and it was like these were like reachable just directly not having a it doesn't have a host of 169 right so okay let's look at a further like what are the things we can do then i set up the vulnerable instance on my own to check this like how this works spinning up a ec2 instance and uh, making some configuration changes and i hit the host with a uh, <coughs> both ips can be same and uh, 
it was able to leak the data actually so here it is like 127 like this is like example.com assume like post as a like example.com and the target will be as example.com so here if you see it's like 169 to 54 and it's like a target but here all the both the host name and targets are same so this was like difference between a uh, ec2 takeover by abusing a reverse proxy and an amazon ec2 ssr so okay i, I thought like uh, so this reverse proxy we have a template on nucleo under the proxy tab and uh, it's called as metadata aws proxy the template goes by it and i thought okay why can why can we like make a template out of it and scan them and so i wrote a template today and uh, let me share how the template looks so i scanned the entire internet in shodan around like 34 targets were there and uh, it loaded 34 targets basically if you have senses or some senses or zoom i or if you can uh, add more sources you will get some more good findings so it's like everything were like straight away leaking the access keys and secret tokens actually so let me show you how the template looks like so this is how the template uh, looks like that i have written it so basically uh, i've set a raw request and i've set unzipped row since uh, i'm using base url as well uh, hostname as well there are like lot of improvements can be made so you can have a status code as uh, 200 and you can have a content type as flex flex pane so for the time being this template is not public yet so what we are going to do is so uh, make a github pull request on the live stream here yeah. yep so we will go to vulnerabilities uh there is no directory called uh, amazon right so we'll create a directory called amazon and uh, we'll paste the template here amazon is it as srf and uh, we will name it as yaml so i have verified this template so i will add a tag as verified true Yep, this looks uh, pretty much neat. Let's uh, raise a branch because I cannot commit it in this branch. My main branch, basically. Yep. So uh, let's create a PR. If someone is like wondering, uh, we can name it as IWCon. Cool. so you can check this out here 6385 and uh, that's it so there are some validation i guess template validation issues let's see okay we'll fix it out so people who want to scan it you can right away go after the session and uh, copy this template and scan the internet see if you can make some hits cool so let's go to uh, misconfigured gcp bucket policies so <coughs> if there is a domain uh, that you are like unsure or want to check if it belongs to a bucket or you can try to always skip this endpoint or storage.google aps or wait a minute i don't need seconds if google apis.com and you can specify the bucket name so let me show you how it looks like Okay, let's see. Yep. Uh, yeah. So there is an another endpoint to check uh, the storage policies, and uh, you can just change the name of it and. check it out from here i can mention uh, microsoft and it shows that uh, it's kind of a storage permission and have a test iam privilege response in it so this is just a basics of checking if you can uh, check for a gcp bucket policy cool uh, let's move to the next slide so this is most of the interesting thing i would say uh, i'm not promoting gray hat where uh, where here so this is a search engine basically to check or find a leaked or open buckets digital ocean space 
and uh, Google Cloud Platforms or Azure Blob Storage. So what it does, <coughs> what it does it, basically you, it's like a shodan, uh, like an alternative shodan for uh, buckets, you can say. So this is a premium subscription. If you're not having a premium subscription, still you can search for uh, some amount. So let's put uh, microsoft.com as a bucket name and see what are the buckets it has. So it displays like multiple things. So let's search for something credentials. Okay, so it displays something. So there are some unwanted data in the search engine, right? So we will use exclude function in this and uh, specify JPG and uh, JPJ. PHP, we can have PHP, we can don't need GIF. Okay, let's add PHP and uh, PNG because we don't need images. Okay, let's, okay, it shows registered. Okay, let's log in again. I think there might be a session timeout. Cool. Let's start again. Credentials. Exclude. We'll have a PNG, PHP, JPG, JPG, and a GIF. And then let's search for it. Okay, so we have HTM files, so we don't need HTM files out of it. HTM and HTML we will ignore for the time being now. Cool, so we have got some JavaScript files. You can go through this JavaScript files and see if you can find something. Okay, I'm removing JS as well now. Let's see something which is, okay, there are RTF files. So this way, like if you only want, uh, like include, Okay, let's put a uh, SQL file. So there is no file. Passwords. Okay, there is no SQL file, some fast. So this way, like you can try to search for credentials here. The main biggest plus point is like, uh, <coughs> you can have all these uh, options like Azure, Amazon, AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure Blob in it. Yep, so we are going to see how we can do continuous monitoring using Cloud List. So this slide is, we have shown it in the last uh, TikTok as well on IWCon, uh, where I missed out Cloud List, but I've shown, like shown uh, if you use Cloud List with Nuclear, you can have a, this is basically a CI/CD pipeline for any product-based company which run, which majorly runs on cloud for uh, like AWS or GCP or Azure. Uh, I will share the slides which contains the links uh, which are like hyperlinked. So some of the other open source tools for cloud security. So <coughs> these open source tools are mainly focused on penetration testing and bug bounty. If you got these keys, so the common thing in this four tools, right? there are like other tools as well. These are like most popular and well-known tools. So Paco by Rhino Security Labs and Scout Suit by NCC Groups and Prowler. Prowler has a pro edition as well. It's paid one. Uh, Prowler is a open source one as well. And Cloud Sprint from Salesforce. So all these tools just uh, needs those uh, access keys and tokens. If you are having an AWS account with an administrator account, uh, you can grab it. Uh, you can take it from there and uh, configure it with these tools and run these tools. So some of these tools return a proper compliance report as well related to VCI DSS or QSA or ISO standard. Yeah, so these are the reference of it. And uh, I've done a research on AWS misconfigurations. And uh, this is just a beginner edition, I would say. Uh, it has around 11 different... Uh, cloud misconfiguration and uh, it will take around like one hour or 30 minutes to go through the entire blog. Uh, I've detailed specified how to solve this cloud go challenge and how how to set up these labs, uh, how, what are these commands and used for. Yep, uh, any questions?
okay any automation tool to test for cloud security vulnerabilities i think you can use those style uh, slides which i have like in the open source tools like you can use the uh, paco or some other thing tips to develop own new code templates so <coughs> just get started i would say because hi again so we can go to the next question hi yeah i'll just show the most upvoted questions so yep. this question is by mukund yeah okay found ssrf uh, aside from my uh, iam credential what else i can look for in a metadata instance yeah so uh, after you looked for credentials uh, just try what privilege of credential you have uh, i've seen uh, there was a aws cognito misconfiguration where i was able to take the organization's uh, aws administrator account they were running a vulnerable app on it so you can look for those if you got the credential just see what iam privilege uh, you have and uh, how further you can do so there was a funny scenario where uh, i reported a iam credential disclosure and i was using cloud list with along with nuclea so i reported it as critical and it went uh, 9.8 straight away and i ran cloud list and found a uh, four different ips of the same company which doesn't have a ssl certificate into it and there is no specific domain name also so these ips were owned by the test developers which had the test data as well as customer data so i reported all those things uh, as a separate finding so it's like a double bounty for it so cool, cool. Uh, so before we proceed to the next question people are asking if they'll get the slides So yeah, Dhyanesh is going to share them on his Twitter. We are also going to share it with all the attendees via email. So you're definitely going to get these slides. Uh, so next question is a similar version of the previous question, and we have uh, more questions like this as well. Uh, so uh, basically, people want to know some resources and tools that can be used to conduct cloud yeah, security. Yeah, so there is a there is a GitHub repository called Awesome Security. cloud let me share it uh or some cloud security okay i'm putting it in the chat uh we will take this out yep so basically this github repository contains all the resources related to the cloud providers which uh what are the tools to use how to get started how to set up a vulnerable instance Great. So we have one more question uh, from Amrut Sek asking, "What are the most common misconfig you found on cloud assets? Its permissions or IAM, etc." Ah, uh, I think uh, I found a lot of SSRFs actually. So I showed you one SSR of a EC2 instance. Ah, uh, I was looking at a table of sixteen cloud providers, right? So I row. I am making templates for all those sixteen cloud providers which have a metadata. so these templates are not out so i know the logic of it and uh, try to automate it and uh, scan it across a wide set of uh, data set so that's what mostly i have found it's like a <coughs> misconfiguration i would say some of them were like reverse proxy some of them like uh, straight forward uh, power proxy yep next next is by hardik and the question is to start in cloud security which would you uh, suggest to start with like aws azure or gcp which cloud okay so i would suggest to start with aws uh, because uh, uh, when i started it was very easy to understand and uh, all the cloud providers have a common terminologies like iam policies uh group policies permission so once you just learn one provider you will be able to uh see the same things on all providers there will be like very minor changes so let's take an example in uh, gc in aws you have access keys and secret keys in gcp you have service accounts in azure you have client id secrets tenant ids digital relations you have tokens only like very small similar changes will be seen you can just go with aws now cool uh, another question is by john 
Uh, is there an active cloud security Discord or Slack? Uh, there is. There is one uh, from uh, Rhino Security Labs. So <coughs> I'm a part of the Slack channel. Let me share the Slack channel link. Uh, one second. Uh, loud code. I'm just checking the link of the Slack channel. Okay, I'm just pasting it on the... Okay, it's no longer available. I think uh, there was a Slack channel for Rhino Security Labs. So if it is, it's not, it shows the link is not uh, not working now, so I'm just seeing if I can get a valid link. But I'm pasting Rhino Security Labs uh, GitHub page. So if you scroll down, uh, you will be able to see a join Slack community uh, link on it. Great. Uh, another question we have from Dhir. Uh, can you suggest some good books and resources to start with cloud security? So uh, I think books, I'm not sure. Uh, I have not read any books so far. I just follow Twitter uh, threads related to cloud security and uh, try to uh, reach out to this Slack groups actually. So. What happened was when I was learning uh, AWS Cloud, I joined this Rhino Security Labs and uh, where I met one of the guy who developed Rhino Security Lab, uh, like the cloud code. And uh, there were some issues while setting up. So it was more, more active uh, joining this community groups, I would say. You can, they, because they used to post uh, what are the new vulnerabilities comes up and uh, how to get started because they all have the uh, damn vulnerable setup. And if you are very new and uh, you are not able to set up anything, you can get attack defense uh, subscription from Pentester Academy. They have a AWS uh, Pentest Labs, which are like pre-built. You can just click on start button and you will be able to see this. That's it. Like there are like around uh, 30 or 40 plus uh, labs that they have built on AWS alone. Uh, which which contains the solution how to solve those lab what what is the procedure to follow uh, how to approach yeah this this should help okay great uh, so we have two questions from rohan and from uh, samuel and the question is same cloud security roadmap to learn uh I would say don't uh, like don't keep a roadmap like a, do a certification and you will become a cloud security expert or something. Just spend time on uh, reading these misconfiguration which are like existing ones. Try to set up your own lab first and then because when you know what happens in background like why this is ARM policy, why is this uh, happening here and what is happening in the background. When I saw when I was uh, facing some issues on cloud code, uh, I tried to see those files, how it has been returned and uh, how these challenges have been returned. So it helped me to have a proper roadmap for cloud security. Once I completed cloud code, I started to explore these uh, all latest findings and uh, try to automate those and try to see what is missing in it. So just like the EC2 SSR that I showed now. Got it. So thank you so much, Dhanesh, for ask, uh, answering all the questions. And thank you so much, oh. audience, for uh, being active and being engaged throughout. Uh, Dhanesh, thanks for being our repeat speaker. We are very, very happy yeah. to have you here. Thank you so much and for uh, We really enjoyed your idea. talk. Good. That's good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dhanesh. Please hang on in the networking rooms. I'm pretty sure, sure, sure. our uh, attendees would enjoy that. Sure, sure. Awesome. Thank you, Dianesh. So as you as you heard uh, from the speaker himself, Dianesh is going to hang out in the networking area, in the tables, in the fluid space. So definitely go and chill in the network lounge until the next session starts. 
you will get a notification before it starts so don't worry about missing out on it and as you know before i have told you so many times if you want to take part in the giveaway just put a screenshot on twitter tag us tag the speaker and use the hashtag iwswags if you only want to be considered for a swag giveaway uh, aside from that don't worry about the recorded talks and the slides you're going to get all of them after the conference is over so yeah keep checking the email and keep checking our twitter and stay tuned for the next talk thank you so much for attending